Hi there, my name is Zach. I'm the creator of Raytha. Thank you for joining us. Raytha is a content management system and rapid application development framework for .NET developers, as well as any casual users who might want to be spinning up websites as quickly as possible. In this video, we're going to be doing a brief demo of the core functionality of Raytha. Basically everything you can do from within side the platform, anything that comes out of the box. But if you're interested in building on top of Raytha and extending its functionality or using it as a boilerplate for building .NET applications and basic websites, then subscribe to the channel because we're going to be putting out videos and educational content about what you can do with the platform as well as other general topics such as software development and business. Now I have a fresh installation of Raytha ready to go. So without further ado, let's dive into the platform. This is the Raytha dashboard. It's the first thing that you're going to see when you log into the platform as an administrator. Let's get some of the plumbing out of the way, some of the things you, you might expect or hope for when you use a framework like Raytha out of the box. So we'll hop over to settings on the left side navigation and click admins. I've added myself as an admin under just a fake email address for demonstration purposes, but we see here I have my admin account and we can create other admins and give them different roles. Now what's important about Raytha is that it comes out of the box with role-based access control. And that means that you can create roles or modify the roles that are already there as part of the default platform. So when you create or edit a role, you have pretty granular access to both system-wide permission settings, as well as on a per content type level, what each role is capable of doing. This is really helpful, really powerful, and it's nice to have this out of the box when you're building a brand new application. Next up is configuration. Some of the basics that you might expect, such as you know the organization name, website, time zone, date format, and what the reply to email address is going to be on any email that comes out of the platform. Under authentication, Raytha comes with two standard authentication schemes, email address and password, and magic link login. Email address and password is enabled by default for both public users and administrators, but you can change that by specifically allowing different authentication schemes for public users versus admins. One example might be where you would like to create a custom authentication scheme so that you can add a new one that is based on SAML. This might be a case where you want your administrators to log in using Google Workspace, but maybe you want your public users to log in through an email and password authentication. Raytha supports both SAML and JSON web tokens for building custom single sign-on authentication schemes. Next up is the audit log. This is really great to have because it's going to track all rights to the Raytha platform. So any meaningful change made from a settings perspective or to content on the platform is tracked here under the audit log. And once again, your account must belong to a role that has access to these audit logs. Let's take a look at public users. I'm the only account in the platform, but we can create our own users, or if we have the email and password authentication scheme enabled, public users can create their own accounts on the public facing website. But here you can manage the public users, such as resetting their passwords, suspending and deleting accounts as needed, as well as the ability to create user groups. We can create a user group, for example, a members only user group, and we can place users into this user group either manually or it can get populated automatically through one of the custom authentication schemes such as JSON Web Tokens or SAML. User groups are helpful because by using these groups, you can show or hide content on the public facing websites to users depending on which groups they belong to. For example, you can wall off certain content that can only be accessible to people who belong to a certain group. Let's head back to the dashboard. In a fresh installation of Raytha, you get pages and posts content types automatically installed for you. Let's check these out. 
Under Pages, we have a home page and an About page that's created for us. We can, of course, delete these and create our own. We can also go to Posts and see that we have a sample blog post that's been created for us as well. Let's check out the live website and see what this looks like from a public facing perspective. Out of the box, Raytha gives you a blank canvas. This is a standard looking website. There isn't really much to it because it's on us to make the website our own. Our homepage just has some sample content. We can also click the about page and we can go to the blog and see the list of blog posts and then click on a blog post to read the full post. Let's head back to the administrative portal and add a new post. I'm going to select a template, content item detail view, and let's call this sample post. When I create a new post, I also have additional options available on the right side navigation. I can go to settings and change the URL that links to this post. I can change the template that I originally selected, and I can also go to revisions and revert my post to any previous revision I might have had. Let's refresh the live site and see that post in action. We now see this post available on the public site. It does look a little bland though. So let's add some elements to our page to make it a bit more interesting and attractive to our visitors. For example, we should add a created by along with some details for the author. Maybe we can have a featured image at the top of the post. And finally, maybe a link to related blog posts. Let's go ahead and add these elements to our platform. To do that, let's head back to the admin portal, back to our list view, and go to the settings and fields for our blog post type. As you can see, we only have title and content, but we can simply add our own by clicking create field. We're going to add the featured image and select the attachment field type that allows file uploads. It's not going to be required though. We're also going to add a related blog post item. And for this one, we're going to choose a one-to-one -one relationship field, which allows us to link a content item to another content item. In this case, we want to link it to a content of the same type which is posts. And finally, we also want to add an author, but we don't have an author type. So let's create one by clicking new content type and creating an author. However, we need to make sure that our author type has the proper fields that we would expect when we're adding authors to a platform. So again, let's head over to fields, but this time for the author type and let's add a name field, which is a single line text field, a profile picture field, once again, an attachment and the bio field, which can be a long text field. We don't need title and content, so we're going to go ahead and remove those. Now that we have our three fields for an author, I'm going to add myself as an author. Okay, we should be good to go. Let's head back to posts. Let's add that author type and select one to one relationship and this time choose authors. Let's modify our sample blog post that we added earlier and fill in the additional fields that we've added to our content type. All right, we've updated our blog post. I wanna pause here and recap what we've done because it's quite important. First, we added a new content type called author. We've also modified the post content type to include a relationship between the posts and the author content type, as well as another field, which is a relationship unto itself to link to a related blog post. Lastly, we've also added a featured image to the blog post. Now, just because we've added all these elements from the data perspective does not mean that they will necessarily automatically appear on the public facing website. And that's where templates come in. And that's why templates are so important. Templates in Raytha require some HTML knowledge. And if you're already familiar with HTML, you'll feel right at home because it is based on the liquid syntax popularized by Shopify. It's super easy to use. So the rest of this video, we'll be covering how to wire up templates to the new data points that we've added to our platform. Let's head over to templates in the left side navigation. 
template that we've been using for our blog post is the default content item detail view, but we can simply create our own if we wish. Uh, but this time we're going to edit the existing content type. You can actually choose a parent template, which is our layout template. And that's the template that almost all templates will inherit from. You can specify if this is a base layout that other templates will inherit from. And you can also limit which content types have access to using this template. This is quite a basic template. There isn't much going on. Just to test things out, let's click insert variable and grab some variables from the content types that we plan to use. All right, we have our blog featured image, our related blog post and our author variable copied over here. Let's wrap these in P tags just to see what they output on the public website and see what we're working with. By default, it will output the primary field of our related author and our related blog post, and it will output the object key of the featured image, which is the attachment that we've uploaded. But that's okay, we can work with this. Let's take this a step further. The first things first, I'm going to turn this into an image. Next, we wanna be able to create a URL pointing to the author if we want to click on it. That is with the route path variable, as well as the profile picture of the author themselves. So let's add that too, but we need to access the content type fields. So we'll do publish content type. And if we insert variable, let's just remind ourselves what that value is. We'll copy and paste that in here. So it is profile pick dot value. We also have the related blog post and we want the route path for that too, because we will want to include a link to click to see that related blog post. It's good practice to get all the variables you need out onto your template and then name them like this. Then save your template and refresh the public website. And here we go. We have all the information we need on the template showcasing on the actual page. So now it's really on us to style this in a manner that looks a bit more attractive. So I'm going to spend some time to adjust the HTML so that it looks a bit more presentable. It took a few minutes to clean up the HTML, style it a little better. I added the date of the post along with a liquid syntax filter. And I included the bio here and a bootstrap card at the bottom. I'm not that much of a front end guy myself, but I can hack away at HTML using bootstrap and other styling frameworks. Let's just show you the end result. We have the date and featured image along with the title and the author. And then I added some more lore and some content to the blog post. So it's fleshed out a little bit more. And then at the bottom, we have the author information, the bio name and profile pic. With about 15 minutes of effort, we were able to add all this functionality to the website just by adding and modifying content types and then manipulating the HTML so that we get the layout that we desire. It's pretty good. Uh, so I hope you found this demo interesting and that you'd like to learn more about Rathus. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and uh, stay up to date with the latest news, feature releases, and head over to the website, Rathus.com, look at the user guides, check out the code on GitHub. It is completely open source and free to use. Uh, so uh, stay tuned for more updates. Thanks a lot.